Badly here on Zen TV. <coughs> Looking to play No Man's Sky. Badly. Now you remember, you may remember last time uh, we talked a little bit about what we're going to do next. And one of the things that we were going to do is to gather some resources and fill up our freighter and to head off uh, to the last Atlas post, which is where I am in the game. So I uh, did the boring mining thing while we were offline. And so now we're all ready uh, to head off. Our frigate, if you remember, did come back. It's a little damaged and needs gold and silver. And of course, we don't actually have any gold or silver. But I've decided that it's going to be far more interesting in the small time that we have to head off in our frigate, in our capital ship, and to do the next bit of the Atlas search. So here we are uh, on our uh, on our capital ship, and uh, oh, we're not where I thought we were in the ship. That should surprise absolutely no one. But we're going to head off and see what we can what we can find. So this is the capital ship, the BXCS uh, Black Xanthus capital ship, uh, of course. So we're going to see what we can find. Um, the BXCS Eterna Eternia. For those of you, yes, it is in fact named after the planet on which you would find uh, He-Man. Uh, for those of you that remember that far back. Though I do hear that it's being rebooted, which will be uh, interesting. Uh, she -Ra is also getting a reboot and there's been all kinds of fuss about, about that on the grounds that this time she -Ra is dun 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 fully dressed. Um, oh, we also appear to have critically damaged our bold caster uh, by being dead. At some point so we should probably also fix uh, fix that uh, so this is the uh, stuff that we have we've got some albumium pearls that need uh, the need selling but we, ha we don't have time uh, to do that right now so let's let's do this thing so that's the commission station this is uh, the frigate warp map so I suppose I should tell you before we actually uh, do warp somewhere uh, on a frigate, uh, you charge the, on a freighter even, uh, you charge the engines by going to this technology bit, which you can see is almost hidden here. And here is our warp engines. And you can see that they are fully charged, ready to go. Now, I don't know how far we're going to get uh, with that, but we should at least be able to make one jump. Everybody's aboard. Everybody is ready to go. Uh, so we are in search of an Atlas station. You'll notice at the top of our galactic map, it says Atlas station. This red line here uh, shows us the way to go. And you'll see that it's marked Atlas station. And we're going to head into this, uh, into this service. Now, I'm quite happy to do that. I've deleted my base from where we were because the planet wasn't very good. So we might even find a planet. Um, so let's see if we can, uh, it says hyperdrive has no fuel. <laughs> That's how good I am at this. I thought I had in fact fully charged it when uh, I hadn't. So let's uh, have a look at freighter. Uh, let's go to technology. Uh, let's click this. Um, charge equipment with warp cell. It does in fact say 100%. Well, isn't this interesting, uh, ladies and gents? Um, which hyperdrive? I mean, that hyperdrive has some fuel as well. So what's going on here? What's going on? Well, this will be interesting because I have absolutely no idea uh, why it is that we can't do this. Let's go to here. Hyperdrive has no fuel. How fascinating. How interesting. Well, okay. So this is going to take some puzzling. Um, if anybody has any any plans out there about why it says we can't warp, uh, I would be uh, pleased to hear it. Um, maybe it's because we're actually out of frigate fuel. Because our frigates are going to need to come with us. And we don't have enough fuel to jump those as well. Um, FTL pro propulsion, that does in fact seem to be fully charged, 100% there. 
Well, let's see if we can um, if we can make some frigate fuel. There we go. That should at least mean that our frigates can come with us. Um, or do we actually need fuel for our frigates as well? Uh, those are the little ships that fly fly around with us. Let's see if we can try that again. Hyperdrive has no fuel. Hmm. Hmm. Right. Interesting. Back to the drawing board about trying to work out how we fly when seemingly everything seems to have enough fuel. Now, it might be because this ship is still damaged. So to repair it, what we need is some gold and silver. So we're going to try repairing that and see how that goes. Um, if I can remember how to get back down uh, to my bridge and I've gone the wrong way. I just turn around, reorient orientate myself and try again. Now, handily, these, uh, these levels have uh, little numbers at the end of the corridors to tell you uh, whereabout you are so you know what happens when you go wrong. There's the stairs down and we turn left here and there's the stairs down. So we're going to go take our ship and go and see if we can get some gold and silver and repair that ship and then see if that is enough to get us to warp. Uh, greatest plans of mice and men and all that. Now we are also uh, out of launch fuel um, in this ship as well. So we are basically out of all kinds of things. So to get some gold and some silver, all we need to do is to find the asteroid belt. Now the joy about the asteroid belt is that it is pretty much everywhere. And uh, so we're just gonna fly for a bit and it will soon soon appear out of nowhere as we as we approach or worse there we go there it is the asteroids just sort of flying around and we can just sit here and we do actually now have a uh, or we did have a mine there we go picking up some silver let's uh, blow that away now we did um, have some uh, we did have a mining laser very, very briefly, uh, but as you can imagine, I died, so uh, so we lost it. That's just that's just how this game goes for me. Uh, so we just blow this stuff up. Now we'll get some tritium. Uh, now tritium is actually uh, necessary for fueling the pulse drive. So being as we haven't managed to find uranium anywhere, I'm guessing that we're going to be spending some time firing around in these in these asteroid belts trying to collect the resources that we need now uranium is uh, is rare but it, it should be showing up on uh, on planets as we as we land on them uh, but i haven't yet seen uh, seen any uranium but being as i couldn't also find cobalt despite the fact that it was staring me in the face there's no guarantee uh, that i haven't actually come across it and then managed to completely ignore it. So we're getting some gold there, seeing that in that little pop-up in the right-hand corner. Um, we're getting some tritium, and out of some of these, we are also getting silver. Now, this is one of those things that I thought we wouldn't have to do uh, in this in this particular episode. I thought what we would have is a quite a nice trip um, to go and see the the Atlas, and I thought that would be a, a nice, interesting thing to show you. But of course. As ever, um, I'm playing this thing badly. So instead, here I am flying around an asteroid, collecting gold and silver uh, in order to be able to show you the thing that I logged on to do in the first place. Some of you might be wondering why it is I don't just turn off and try again. But I think actually uh, showing you uh, what it's like to just bodge around the asteroid field, shooting at asteroids, which is part of the charm of the game. And I know that some people will find that this bit is tedious. You can, of course, throw money at it. You, we could just fly to the nearest space station and we could just throw money and gain us enough gold and silver to get what we want. I, I find that that kind of idea, uh, while it's a completely valid way of playing the game, that the long and the short of it is, is that I'm cheap. And because I'm cheap, flying around... Uh, collecting the elements one by one, um, bit by bit from uh, from these things uh, is the thing that that we're going to be doing. 
So what else do I like about No Man's Sky while we're, while we're flying around here? Now, what is uh, one of the major selling points, of course, is its beauty. But I think, especially with the new Next update, uh, what I'm quite liking is that there is actually a plot. Now, part of that plot, as we have already discovered, if because we've obviously been playing this game for a while, is that uh, the universe is dying. Um, and the reason for it dying seems to be some sort of computer glitch. There seems to be the suggestion that we are inside a computer and that the sentinels that we see, those strange flying boxes, are there to try and stop too many changes to a world because it's causing the computer to crash. Now, of course, how real that is, we don't yet know. It could just be the fact that we are travellers, so we are unknown people that wake up uh, in the middle of nowhere with just a ship and a message calling us on. And it could just be that in all of that, in all of that strangeness, what we're finding in these Atlas beacons is actually just the fact that this Atlas, this semi-divine uh, computer is just mad. It wouldn't be the first time that a computer has declared itself God. Um, especially in a space game, we all have seen presumably uh, a space odyssey, 2001, a space odyssey. And in that, of course, Hal has, uh, um, uh, has become semi-aware, has become sentient and declares himself God of those uh, poor, unfortunate humans uh, in, its, uh, in its care. And uh, yes, you will notice that we um, have now been uh, spotted by some hostiles and here they come basically to ruin my day. Um, and they are surprisingly good shots, which is slightly irritating. So as you all know, you've seen me try and do this uh, before and you know that I am not very good at this. Um, but we can uh, see if we can actually do this before our shields run down. So we're going to cycle as we as we fly. We're going to cycle between um, our uh, small weapon, which is this one, and our rocket launcher. Because if we do manage to get a hit with the rocket launcher, it will do uh, quite a bit of damage to these pirates. Uh, there is a small reward uh, for taking out pirates. Um, we're not doing very good with the rocket launcher at the moment. There it is. And that's our shield gone. So we might just have to call it a day because too much damage and uh, we won't survive. Ah, we have just luckily managed to rid our skies of one. Now we are thankfully being helped by nearby ships um, that have chosen to come out and help us. Those are the ones with the green trails that you can see flying about uh, shooting at the pirates. So they probably did far more damage to these things than I did. Um, but it does help if you can actually aid them in their quest. Here we go, turning around. Let's see if we can find this thing. And if we can get a decent shot with the rocket launcher. Nope. No, no, we can't. No, we can't. Uh, that was kind of hoping, really, wasn't it? There it is again. Let's see if we can... Uh... Oh, we did manage to hit it. And if you did see that, um, the amount of damage that it took, you would have seen that it took... Uh, quite a bit. It's now down to orange from the white that it was. So another couple of good hits and we should in fact have it gone, ruined, removed from our star system. And there we go. We're almost, almost dead. We're very glad for these two ships helping us out here. And I think that was it. Yes, we have defeated them. There we go. There's no rewards. Um, uh, other than our standing with the Viking has increased because, of course, uh, we weren't defending anybody but ourselves. Um, which is... Uh, uh, because we're still carrying around this expensive cargo um, when, despite the fact that I have told you, uh, dear listener, several times that I should probably put it on board the ship, I still haven't. So let's see how much gold we've got. Um, so we've got 123 gold, which might be enough... Uh, and we've got 290 silver. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to get um, just a, a bit more gold if we can. Um, but I don't know how you tell the difference with these uh, with these things. Um, how you know which one has gold and which one has silver. 
Um, so these are, this one seems to have gold on it. So we'll just wait for our um, photon to recharge and then just blast this one away and get some gold. Um, so this one seems to have quite a bit of gold in it, which is quite nice, might push us over the edge. I'm thinking about 200 gold should be enough to repair the damage and then we will try again at warping and see whether or not that's the reason that we can't warp is that um, the uh, that the engine in that one isn't fixed because it's it's went out on a mission and got itself critically damaged. Here we go, just shooting away there, getting rid of um, as much of this tiny little uh, this tiny little asteroid as we can, building up our gold. You can see the gold increasing uh, in the top right hand corner there. Okay, I think that's probably done. Let me just uh, have a quick check here. Uh, so 188 gold, I think that's probably going to be enough. So we're heading towards this red thing here. This is our damaged ship. So if we, uh, if we can actually focus the pulse drive on it and cover the large distance. Now, interestingly, the way you repair these ships is you do so by landing on them and actually physically going in and repairing the ship. Now the landing pads are at the back of the ship, just here, there it is, see? Um, there we go, we cannot bring in glory in the battle for the ship is damaged, inspect the damage report. <coughs> uh, maintenance is required, mark the damaged components and we will get little dots. There we go. Um, now there are little stairs that bring us down into the underbelly of the ship and we should have some little red dots which don't appear to have turned up this time um, so we may have to guess uh, where this maintenance is so it's not that one let's see if we come back along here and into here uh, let's see is it this one no that doesn't seem to need uh, maintenance at all let's come up through here and all of these little consoles that we're passing they're all uh, places where we can in fact do maintenance so it's none of those so let's go back up here see if we can if we can find the remaining one so it's none of those down there now if we come through this door uh, we have a whole row of consoles um, none of those seemingly in need of repair we can't interact with them and we can't come out through the door. Let's try this door. No. Well, well, well. All right. So maybe simply our presence landing has managed to recover or fix the ship somehow. So I'm going to try leaving and see if uh, coming back um, is going to activate that again. Let's see if we have a look, leave, have a look back at the ship. Now, interestingly, it has stopped glowing red. So clearly our presence has been enough. There we go. Let's uh, find out whether or not we can initiate launch on the BXCS uh, Eternia. There we go. I quite like that little turning mechanic. I think it's quite cute. Let's go see what we can find if we head up to the bridge. Because the bridge will tell us everything that we need to know. Unfortunately, it's a bit far from here. I think in hindsight, what I probably should have done is made the launch and the uh, fleet management a bit closer to the bottom. But hindsight is a beautiful thing. Let's see. So that ship is now white, looking ready to go. So whatever we did, we've managed to fix it. Let's have a wander down here. And uh, uh, that's our Galactic Command Center. That's not what we want to do. Here is our frigate warp map. And let's see, is repairing that ship going to be enough? Hyperdrive has no fuel. Okay, so what are we missing? We have uh, fixed the other ship. Um, that's the Zentania there. That's, it's only the phase beam. Hyperdrive has some fuel. Uh, let's have a look at our freighter. 
uh, that's our exosuit, our freighter here. Uh, so there is frigate fuel, so that seems to work. Um, that antimatter housing, that granite housing, and here's the technology one. Uh, charge with the warp cell. Well, 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 I am now very confused. Let's find out if we talk to the Admiral, whether or not he's got any idea. Um, plotting cargo. Um, transport items from ship to freighter. Um, to immediately leave the, um, there we go, so we can uh, mass transfer things from our Starship inventory, but we don't appear to need to do any of that. Okay. Okay, so anybody listening who has any clue how we leap the freighter uh, forward, I am all ears. Hyperdrive has no fuel. Let's see if we go the other way. Can we go the other way? Uh, let's have a look. Uh, life forms, conflict, economy, no filter, uh, current mission, uh, atlas station, no black hole, atlas station. Hyperdrive has no fuel. All right, so what we're probably going to have to do is to Google this answer. Um, so does anybody happen to have Google to hand? No? Okay, so let's let's see. So we want a frigate... Um, so first off, the game that we're playing, which is No Man's, no Man's Sky. Uh, sky. I can't spell Sky, ladies and gentlemen. That should be of no, uh, uh, no, uh, uh, no surprise to you. Uh, no Man's Sky frigate uh, can't warp even, even with fuel. And hello to those of you that have just joined our stream. Um, ah, interestingly, first hit on Reddit. Um, uh, this bug has been fixed with patch 1.5.2. Well, that's interesting. Um, because we're on 1.51, which means that there is still a bug. Um, uh, which, which might mean that we have to wait. So rather than waiting for a whole download, what I'm going to do is we're going to abandon our frigate because it'll still be there when we get back. And there is an interesting uh, way of summoning our frigate should we need to. And we're going to leave the BXCS and head off uh, into space in the BXSS uh, Zentania which, uh, for those of you not familiar with how I've named things, uh, CS being capital ship, SS being spaceship, and uh, Zentania is, is our little ship, which is uh, somewhere here, uh, somewhere, somewhere here, ship, 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 there it is. Okay, so there she is. Let's climb aboard, take her out into space, and then walk with her and hope that uh, when the update finally hits to the PS4, uh, we can take our frigate with us. So, uh, to, to warp in a ship, uh, we use the down arrow, and this produces this uh, ship menu. Ah, galactic, ah, we are too close. Uh, it says planetary interference, but actually it means uh, that the frigate is too close. So let's just fly a little away. Here we go, galaxy map. And so we're gonna fry along this red route to here, Atlas Station. And here we go, boom. Now, it's really interesting that in third person, this does not look as pretty as it does in first person because mostly what you get is a view of the ship as she flies through warp space. Now, we're not going very far, so this shouldn't take too long, but the length of time you spend in warp does entirely depend on how far you're going from one galaxy to another. And when we get out of this, uh, we'll be running right into, uh, right into, um, right into space, or so we'll be picking up the plot uh, like that. And of course, just a reminder for those of you joining the stream, you can 
post in the chat and I will be able to pick up what it is that you're what it is you're saying and I, I am happy to interact with you in that way and there we go this is Atlas Station that's this strange thing hovering in space in front of us um, this is where we are heading this glowing red eye is our last uh, glowing red eye we've been through 15 of these before this is number 16 we have traveled many galaxies to get here and see where the plot takes us they would be really impressive music if i had remembered to turn the music on at this point but we fly into the space station to reveal our central command here we go now a small tip for those of you playing no man's sky uh, as as with all things the ship will turn to face the way out but for those of you who are wondering how you learn so much language each of these little glowy circles as we stand near them will teach us uh, little bits of languages there we are I've just learned the Viking word for poor and seal come over here um, one of the tips is to not go too fast if you want to learn if you want to see what words it is that you've learned uh, not everyone will give you one uh, some will uh, give you uh, small amounts of nanites um, but each one improves your knowledge of the language and if you're like me, that likes knowing what it is these strange creatures are telling you. Here we are. We've learnt the Viking word for uncommon. The Viking are a warrior, uh, warrior race. They have some uh, long faces uh, and quite like their blasters. You'll often see them um, holding their blasters, treating them very well, talking about past glories. The, uh, the Viking word for Gek learned there. Gek is another race. Um, the Gek are the small lizard-like creatures um, who always strike me as a bit terrified of the of the whole world. They're the traders of the world. The Viking are the warriors. Uh, the Gek are the traders. Uh, and then the uh, the we are a traveller. A traveller is a unknown race. Uh, the Viking call us interlopers um, because we're not from this world in their mythology. And originally, No Man's Sky was conceived that you would learn this through... Uh, you'd learn the plot, not through any real interaction, but through just exploration and finding uh, these devices lying around, uh, lying around the place. Uh, but that hasn't, uh, hasn't been a thing that, that, that everybody's been pl uh, happy to do. So they've added these little plot arcs. Viking word for doom. That's not a good word to learn. And up here... Um, word for holy now the joy about this is that it does mean that when you leave uh you are much more versed uh in conversion with viking i don't actually know what happens when you do know all of the words that the game has uh but it does mean that when you are faced with puzzles uh by the viking or by terminals from the viking it's a better it's much easier to work out what the correct response is when you can actually work out what it is that they're trying to say or at least guess at what they're trying to say if you've got the right number of words. And I think that's all of the ones on this side. A last check to see if there's any on the other side. I think that is all of it. So let's go up here and, uh, and start our walk towards the atlas. There it is, the large floating circle. And the way I like the way these things light up makes the whole thing seem much more impressive. We've got two things here um, that occasionally have things in them, but not this time. Here we go. Uh, the else play abstraction. Oh great, we don't understand what it's saying. What is learned can never be unlearned. I'm afraid that I have seen too much. There are glimpses, half-remembered versions of time before me. I see the birth of the first star. I see the things that dwelt within it, the eyes that watched. I see that Atlas saw the moment of its activation. Atlas stones are not stones. 
This station is not a station. I am not what I think I am. I'm not even sure that I exist. The Atlas does not care. The Atlas demands its threnody, its repetition sublime. So we can submit um, or we can refuse and we can leave. Submission is what it wants us to do. And we're going to submit because I am incredibly curious about what's going to happen if we do so again. I silence my fears and renew my dedication to the path. Only the voyage matters. The destination calls to me. Um, we have learned state phasia, which is a product of photoic jade and cadmium. My health has been restored. Okay. It's always that strangeness when you finish these quests because you're never quite sure whether or not we're expecting something else. And this time, uh, there is nothing. There is just more questions. More questions and more questions. So, um, as confused as many travellers, I'm going to head back to my ship and see whether or not leaving, we get a small update to our quest and find out where next in the space is going to take us. As we head out once again into the endless space, part of the game is our journey to the center of the galaxy, to the center of all that is, to see if we can find out what's going on. Uh, but no updates. And just this showing up as a marker onto what we're going on to next. So, uh, dear listener, uh, if you're as confused as I am, welcome to the club. So what we're going to do is we're going to head to the space station, uh, which is just in front of this unknown planet. So we're going to scan it. So we hold down uh, and press uh, L3, and it tells us that it's a tropical planet. But first, we're going to go to the space station. The space station will allow us to warp back. And if you remember, we had to leave our frigate behind because of a small bug, which will apparently be uh, fixed. And I don't fancy the walk or the flyback uh, to get the frigate uh, when that suddenly uh, starts walking. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, the... Uh, oh, there we are. Just charge the pulse engines. So we're going to use the teleporters to allow to speed all that up for us. And here we come into the space station. Now, one of the new things in Next is not all the space stations look the same. They all used to be the same kind of funny diamond shape, but now we've got these uh, circular ones, um, which is uh, new for me. First time I'm seeing these circular ones. And that planet below us, let's just pause for a moment, look at that planet with its rings. That's just that's just really beautiful. I'm looking forward to exploring that. So let's uh, first let's just clock our ship and get a save done. Now you see the game doesn't have a have a save. It kind of checkpoints and it checkpoints in a few locations. Um, it checkpoints when you finish a quest. Uh, it checkpoints when you leave a ship, and it should have checkpointed as we uh, spoke to the Atlas. But just so that I know where I am, I'm going to checkpoint here as we leave the ship. There we are, restore points saved. Uh, as you're aware, a lot of these space stations look pretty much like the other. There are different things that you can get in different space stations, uh, but the layout is the same. There's our teleporter that will teleport us back uh, to the previous space stations. Uh, these are various merchants that will sell us stuff. These are people that we can talk to. And this is where we do our interaction with the Galaxy Terminal. So the Galaxy Trade Network, uh, this top part that you can see here, gives you details about who I am, how far I've travelled. On foot exploration there being um, 406 kilometres, um, and the number of aliens I've encountered, the number of uh, world, words collected, units accrued, and so on. But we're here to sell stuff and empty our inventory. What we're going to sell uh, for the, uh, is the album and pearls, which are here. We've got uh, seven of them. Uh, they are a nice, nice uh, lot, uh, amount of money, make my money look a bit healthier. We finally passed the golden to uh, two million mark, so we'll be able to buy another little ship uh, for our um, for our fleet. But I think we've got just enough time 
uh, before I'm going to have to uh, leave you and do those real world things to fly down to this planet. So hopefully you'll join me as we go and see what this planet looks like. It's called Drampa Nojos and it's a tropical planet, uh, which would uh, imply to me that it's going to be hot. But we've got some pretty lakes, uh, some large amounts of greenery. So let's go and find out what it's going to look like. Here we go. So we enter into the atmosphere as the world coalesces in front of us. Now, uh, one of the joyous things about No Man's Sky is everything is procedurally generated. So what this looks like uh, doesn't look like anything until we actually arrive, until we see it. And there she is. Um, quite a pretty planet heading out below us. Uh, lots of trees, lots of this rather beautiful kind of bluish grass. Um, I'm expecting tropical storms. That's that's one of those things that I think we're probably going to be seeing a lot of as we fly over here. Let's see um, what else we can see. We can see some copper. Um, let's have a look. We've got uh, some deep holes here with water in the middle of them. Some quite rugged terrain. And of course, these amazing clouds. These amazing clouds. Let's go and find us somewhere to to set down. Now I am a fan of setting up by water. So let's just, um, oh, we're heading out into space. Let's, let's head back to the world there. Let's go and find ourselves a nice little seaside to set up on. And that I think will be where we will end it. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, rather bizarre journey as we uh, try to make head and tail of uh, No Man's Sky. Oh, there's a nice little bit of island there. Let's go and set her down just here, just on the edge. There we go. And as we pop out, the game will tell us about the tropical plants. So we have choking humidity. Um, that's what we have here. We have average sentinels um so choking humidity is the thing that's going to going to kill us here and there are our creatures uh walking about in the night Let's see if we can scan one of those you know scan it before it leaves uh oh and it's quite rare so we earned nearly sixty thousand for doing that and remember that doesn't happen with a standard scanner but just because i have this update this upgrade that allows uh, me to get more money for scanning them, totally worth doing. And I think as we look out over this uh, little bay with the stars overhead, I'm gonna leave you with that shot. So thank you for joining us here at uh, Black Xanthus Plays Games Badly. Welcome uh, to my channel for those of you that are new here. I've been Zen, you've been awesome, it's been amazing. And remember before you go, hit that subscribe button. You've all been great. Thank you very much.